I'm with senior quarterback Matt Scott here. What does this win say about Coach Rodriguez and the Arizona football program? Oh, man, he's a great coach, man. I've never, I don't think I've ever played for anybody better than him. Uh, the whole staff did a great job this season. First year, uh, going to a bowl game and winning. I think that's the first ever in, in Arizona history, so congratulations to them. Welcome back to Boise. Marty Cesario here on the Fresno State sidelines. A couple of items to share with you. Junior wide receiver Jamel Hamler has not gotten up from the bench, confirmed with the team physician. Possible head injury, could be concussive, but again, he's not getting up, so he might not be back for a while. And then also with the the, the rain that has been coming down over on the sidelines here, you got Fresno State wide receivers actually making adjustments and switching gloves. As we've talked about this game and the way it sets up, Temple wants to slow things down, just grind it out, be methodical. One possession each, as you said, this deep into the first quarter. And, you know, you could visualize it, Dave Christensen, reacted vehemently when Brett Smith had to call that timeout midway through the Wyoming possession. He was not happy. They had to take the timeout, and they wanted to pick up the pace. Okay, with Coach Hill. For 300 yards of total offense in the first half, what do you do to stop their success? Well, we they've been passing the ball very well against us, and, you know, we uh, a little bit different than we thought we were going to get. We just got to make some adjustments at halftime, but, you know, we're, we're within two scores. we got plenty of time left. All right, thanks, Coach. Back up to you guys in the booth. Just moments ago, Marty caught up with Coach Tuke of Northern Illinois. Defensively, you're doing a great job stopping them. How's that happening? We're playing great defense on first and second down. The problem is all of our problems come on third down, all right? You know, it's your first game on the sidelines in a big bowl game. Could you have drawn it up any better, at least through one half a play? I'm going to be everything I want our kids to be. I'm going to coach my butt off, and I'm going to have fun. There you go, Coach. Thanks. Thanks. For Coach Alt, his Wolfpack, this is kind of a statement game. Coach Alt has been very focused all throughout the week. He wants to represent the Mountain West, which is Nevada's new conference this year. He wants another win over a Pac-12 squad, which, of course, as you referenced, Mark, they got one early to start the season against Cal. This is his chance to showcase the pistol offense. This is a team out of the... Mount West Conference, Smarty is sniffing that eighth win of the season. And they're starting to sniff a bowl victory, too, kind of feeling it emotionally on the sidelines. Assistant coach, he's screaming at his defense, going, you got 16 minutes and 33 seconds to define the rest of these guys' lives. And then he points to big tight end Zach Sudfeld. He's referring to the seniors. We talk about life-defining moments that drive an individual towards seeking and achieving unique greatness. We've heard a lot of that about Tebow. Certainly Coyer enjoying himself now. Had big moments like the Ohio game on national TV where he stepped up, passed for three TDs, ran for 184. But it was in a semifinal game three years ago in high school where he suffered a posterior fracture in a C7 vertebrae. If that would have been like four millimeters lower, he would have been rendered a paraplegic. Instead, he just ended up wearing a neck brace for a month. He realized his calling, set up a Christian fellowship program himself as a sophomore at Temple University. It also helped him be patient and waiting for his chance to participate and produce for the Owls. He's been riding the bench, and now he's rising to glory.